good morning, City Collective Church. Uh, it is so good to be with you this morning. My name is Stuart. I'm Blessin. And we are delighted to be your host this morning. Go church. Go, go <laughs> Super church. excited that we're, we're hosting for the first time together. together. After yeah. years of friendship, eons of us being brothers, yeah. finally they got us in front of the, in front of the camera this way. It was just... Don't know how well it's going to go. To be nope. Yeah, but, <laughs> but we are definitely live on a Sunday morning. Definitely live. Uh, definitely live. And yeah, it's good, to, it's good to see you. It's good to be here. It's good to see you. It's always good to see you, man. How are you doing? It's all right. It's been a, it's been an okay week. Yeah. Work-wise, it's been nice. Uh, as I've mentioned before, you know, I, I now spend all my time in a basement, mm. um, which I call my frozen cave because of how cold it is. Mm. Um, I have been on Zoom calls dressed decently because, mm. you know, it's a news anchor thing. Just on the top? Uh, or yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like shorts on the bottom? Uh, sweatpants. Has to be. Sweatpants. And okay. thick yeah. socks. All that stuff. <laughs> yes. But I have physically once had a blanket on, which is no one Solly's blanket, which was a Paw Patrol blanket. Um, that's a... That's a that's not awesome. not the most professional thing to do, but it you seemed know. to work out. I mean, how was how was your week? Good, you know, another uh, another day or a week, another week in the classroom. Yeah, had good weather, so it's always good to send the kids out for yeah some time outside to burn off their energy. But yeah, I mean, we don't have enough teachers in this church, so it'll no. be good for you to counsel on what school is like for a lot of these people. Yeah, a lot of people wouldn't understand, but... I mean, one and one is what I've always said for this show. (laughs) Drop in the bucket for a teacher. How's it been for for your boys? It's good. I mean, um, I've mentioned this before in in passing, but uh, these apples have fallen far from the tree in some way uh, because they like school. Mm. uh, They listen to their teachers. um, They they do well with orders from their from their family members and teachers They're very very yeah. disciplined um uh, solly as i mentioned uh, not too long ago i think the last time i was hosting solly just got into reading at that time which uh, he felt was like a naughty thing to do at night where he would read under the covers and stuff right. like that That's, which yeah. was amazing we we carried that on and the new uh activity that we've all taken up as a family is chess okay which is hilarious tell me Um, me, me about it because we don't know how to play chess Uh, Uh, so in december they were asked uh or noah asked for a christmas gift of a chess set and we ironically said sure let's get it we got it and um we all watched the same children's video of us learning how to play that's amazing and they picked it up very quickly very well and they very frequently now beat us, mm. but we let them think that, you know, yeah. Yeah. we did that for yeah. you, for your encouragement, for your development, of course, become strong men. Of course, right? teach them so how to win well. You know how to win, yeah. you know, and they win very gracefully. Uh, they do a really, like Noah will typically shake my hand and say, you tried your best um, <laughs> and things like that. And, That's amazing. and I will be like, yeah, you know, good mm. job, buddy. And I go and cry yeah. in the mirror. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're grounded. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> Five year old. So for somebody who's not competitive at all. I'm not competitive at all. No one you? ever says that about me. Who yeah. said that about me? I'm not competitive. No idea. Okay. I'm not competitive yeah. at all. And I don't think anyone in this church is. Are you more competitive than, than me? Personally? I'm the best at being competitive. Okay, okay. Right? That's the difference between right. you and me. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> right? like, you know what I'm saying. saying. <laughs> I think the only person that could eclipse my competitiveness is the pastor <laughs> of the church. Yeah, shout out to Jason, uh, yeah. wherever you're at this morning. Being the best at whatever you're doing. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, that's fair. But, you know, we were talking about the week. Yeah. We got a, a couple of big weeks coming up for... Yeah. Uh, for those in love, because yes. it's Valentine's time. That's true. That's true. Uh, is it next week? Next week? Oh no! I mean, time flies when you're in love. I don't know. Do, do you have it on? What are your plans? Um, are... The beautiful thing about being married for as long as we <laughs> we've been married yes. is that we don't have to do anything crazy, spontaneous. <laughs> she just knows the way to my heart is through my belly. Mm. Um, so I can guarantee it'll be a feast, and that's why. Our household, it's like Valentine's every day because there's always a feast. There's <laughs> always food. There's, there's always, always so always much food. food. The love language of yeah. food is... Yeah, we've had a lot of food recently and put on a decent amount of weight, so, which I'm fine with. Yeah, I love it. It's cold. I have it's no cold. problem yeah, with that. Yeah, you know? But what, are you, I feel like you're the type that's going to cook a fancy meal as opposed to doing a takeout thing or... We'll see. To, you know, to be determined at this point. Yeah, for me, I'm guaranteeing ice cream cakes. I'm guaranteeing some mm. form of chicken. Mm. Um, and if she's going to cook, she's going to cook her lasagna thing, and that'll be awesome as well. So That's right. um, nothing uh, nothing extraordinary planned, mm. but uh, it's love nonetheless. The- you know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's love nonetheless. 
I you feel know, like you, we like cue in a song right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like slow jam <laughs> or something. Um, well, let us know in the comments below what are you doing for Valentine's Day? Are you doing anything? Yeah, and you know, right. ladies that are in the in the chat down there. I mean, I would say put a put a little bit of an indication of what you would like indirectly. And, you know, hopefully the men see it and say, yeah, let's go out to this restaurant or let me get those flowers or whatever it is. Because notoriously, when I have bought gifts for my wife, it has been, <laughs> it has been the wrong thing every time. Um, which is why now my mother-in-law or my sister-in-law will just text me. And, that's fair. That's, and that's tell that's me exactly good. what to get. But before we get off to yeah. too far off topic, <laughs> too far off topic, uh, what well, we got the Sunday? Well, we got a, a fresh new batch of worship that mm. we've recorded. Um, shout out to the production team who did a lot of hard work uh, yeah. just putting that together. Uh, spe specifically, Regan, I know who uh, did all like the the recording and the mixing and mastering. That's, and all so that. That's a lot of work. So it's it's always it's so much fun. It always sounds great. Uh, yeah. uh, obviously. Uh, I think the next segment that we'll have coming right after this is the How You Doing segment. And yes. it's with Al and uh, Jess. Yeah. Uh, and Jessica. And yeah, I think they have some news. Yeah. Um, so, so we're excited to celebrate with them. So uh, I think we're going to roll the clip. Hi, everyone. Hey, everyone. And Happy New Year. We hope you all are staying safe and healthy during this time. A quick life update from us. Al actually got um, a promotion at work recently. And we just got engaged. And we're pretty excited about it. <laughs> we hope that um, you are all cherishing this extra time that you have with your loved ones. I know it hasn't been the easiest time, but um, pretty we're pretty grateful for the extra time we've had to spend together. And I know Zeke has loved um, having us at home a little bit more. <laughs> uh, and now we're gonna get ready for the rest of the service. Let's worship together. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures of faith are never enough. That you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Call me friend Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Oh, oh there's nothing Just 
turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face, and the things. Good morning, City Collective, and happy February 2021. And if this is your first time tuning in with us, my name is Jason. I'm the lead pastor here at City Collective. And for all of those priming, just like myself, and by default, uh, Adriana, priming for happy Super Bowl Sunday, uh, this is just another year where Tom Brady is playing at the beginning of February. And uh, nevertheless, this is a consistent reality and not one that I can say I love per se, but we all have our favorites. And as we begin, there's things that we love, things that we don't love, but it's the month of Cupids, of hearts, of Valentines, of long weekends. And there's just this association that seems to come with the month, one of love, not, not Tom Brady. So we're going to take uh, the next three weeks and go through a series that we're going to be calling Somebody to Love. And I hope it makes you want to sing a little bit at home. Something like, somebody, somebody, can anybody find? You know the song. You know the song. It's Queen. It's Justin Bieber. You never thought you'd hear them in the same sentence. But Somebody to Love, I bet you sound great at home. Now, relationships are a funny thing. And by now, you've probably spent more time with your spouse, parent, partner, child, family, small group of friends than you have ever before or that you ever really planned on. Maybe uh, you don't want to be too obvious in this moment as you agree. So just like our mental health is important to talk about last month, I think we're really well suited to talk about love and relationships. Not, not just with others, but with ourselves and with God. So uh, if you're needing to implement some health and grace into your relationships, this is a great place to start. So somebody to love. Now do this with me. Close your eyes and imagine that you are living during the times of Jesus here on earth. You've heard about this great man of God who's healing the sick, who's cleansing lepers, who's even raising the dead, and nothing seems to faze him. And everything that he touches changes. I want you to picture that with me. He has answers that speak to the heart of humanity's deepest needs, and he does it with a love that has never been seen before. Now, now the scenes that unfold are, are fascinating, and you can't stop following along, and there's just something about him that makes you want to be near him. Now you hear he's coming. And as soon as you know where he's going to be, you feverishly push through the crowds and crowds of people that are around, doing all you can to get as close as possible. And as you scan the horizon through the crowds of people, you spot a glimpse of him. Jesus standing by a hillside, using the valley as a way to let his voice travel. You inch closer so that you don't have to strain to catch his words. And everything he speaks has such profound weight. 
You're processing his words as fast as your heart can take it in. And as he teaches, Jesus addresses a question coming from the religious leaders in the audience. Someone asks, what is the greatest commandment? What's the most important in the law? In other words, they're asking, with all that you shared with us, Jesus, what is the key takeaway we need to know? They were looking for a simple bottom line answer. It's one of those, those questions that everyone is like, oh yeah, <laughs> I would like to know the answer to this. So that everyone in the crowd leans in. And Jesus pauses and he smiles. And in response, he shares a few short sentences illuminating to everyone what life with God is all about. And his answer completely revolves around love and relationships. Jesus says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. To sum up the answer to their questions in one phrase, it would be love God, love yourself, and love people. And you're probably like nodding your head in agreement. Pretty straightforward, right? There's just one problem. Hey, it, it's, it's really not. If I were there, I would, I would need some help understanding the application of this precept. Amidst all of the people, I might raise my hand slightly, slightly nervous, but in the politest manner possible because I am Canadian and I might ask Jesus, I'm stuck on something. If, if you don't mind me asking the statement as yourself, you mentioned we're to love our neighbor as ourselves. Can, can you elaborate on that? Um, how, how do we even do that? How does one know how to love one's self? Okay, you can come back from our little bit of time travel. Because if, if we're honest, and we should especially be honest, we're, we're in church this morning, here online, most would admit to not knowing what it even means to love themselves. What does loving yourself look like? See, we all crave genuine love and companionship. We want deep and meaningful relationships. We want to have connection that is fulfilling and inspiring. We all want these things. We want love to its fullest. Yet, what I have found for myself in my own story is that the greatest inhibitor for healthy relationships around me is my inability to have a healthy relationship with myself. Self-love is harder than it sounds. Sure, we know how to be selfish, but how many of you know that being selfish is often from a place of toxicity? Uh, past relationships that are hurting, insecurities, an absence of godly wisdom. But if this is what purely characterizes self-love to you, no wonder you avoid it. Gr growing up, especially in, in church environments, I would say that the idea of self-love felt a little confusing. Um, most of what we talked about or, or I heard characterized um, in the church was, was self-rejection was more spiritual. Words like crucify or deny were used. Dying to self suddenly became an opportunity where you could accidentally hate yourself or critique yourself. There, there was an underlying fear of arrogance in our lives, of being too prideful, that we rejected the importance of loving and accepting ourselves as God's creation. But here's the thing. If God tells us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, wouldn't it be disobedient and prideful to not love yourself? Self-love does not seem like a suggestion, but rather a command. It seems the greatest commandment is actually the most unfollowed. Now, self-love can be characterized as arrogant and selfish, selfish but true biblical love is not self-absorbed. Have, have you ever seen something that can be incredibly good cause something bad? It's like the story of Joseph and his brothers in Genesis 50 where he says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. God flipped the script there, but that is the way of Jesus. The way of the enemy runs it backwards where God intends it for good, but the enemy intends it for evil and to harm us. Self-love is meant for good. Believe that. It is 
It is careful introspection. It is gracious language. It is forgiving spirits. But self-absorption is escapist tendencies. It's ignorant language, and it's a prideful spirit. Do, Do you see what I'm saying? It's meant for good, but often can lead to evil if we're not careful. And if self-love didn't matter, then Jesus wouldn't have said, he would have just said, love your neighbor. He wouldn't have said anything, period. It ends there. Be nice to them. Don't be mean. But the thing is, Jesus did not say that because he knows the very depths of what makes us who we are. We are people who are always driven by love. The, the, the heart is like a multifunctional desire device that is part engine and part homing beacon, and it's operating under the hood of our consciousness, our default autopilot, where we are driven by the longings of our heart. So our love is always going to point us somewhere. It's always going to shape us, and it's always going to drive us. But if we're not aware of the healthy or un- unhealthy relationships we have with others, with God, and with ourselves, We're going to go down paths that we never really intended to. So let me do my best to explain what true self-love is in its purest form. And I want to first do that by explaining what self-love is not. I want to undercut any faulty definitions or perspectives that that we might be carrying this morning. So number one, self-love is not self-centered. Quite bluntly, Focusing solely on oneself with little regard for others has nothing to do with self-love and is more self-idolatry. Selfishness and self-centeredness are counterfeits that are not concerned with loving others authentically, but elevating oneself. True love says I'm willing to lay down my life for another. And when we have narcissistic tendencies, we are not operating from the heart of true self-love. That way is is to live what is often referred to as like an egocentric reality where life is all about self. And narcissists, they find ways to remain in a selfish world that is vain, spending very little time thinking or empathizing over others. And many who say they love themselves are often missing the mark because they make most situations, conversations, and scenarios circle back somehow back to themselves. We've all been there where their emphasis always seems to be what's going on with them, their viewpoint, or their feelings. But 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4 says, Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is, does not envy, does not boast. It's not arrogant. It's not rude. And it doesn't insist on its own way. But people who love themselves will respond differently. They have settled love in their heart, so it flows out freely. So self-love is not self-centered. And number two, self-love is not self-indulgent. Many times I hear from well-intentioned people who can share examples of how they were loving themselves, myself included. Um, But we can deliver these like foolish tales of financial decisions or endless hours of wasteful activities, all with the label of self-love. And this is not what I'm talking about when I say self-love. Eating a tub of ice cream and checking out of reality with television is not self-love. It's actually often a manifestation of lacking self-love because those experiences do not add life. Proverbs 18.1 says, He who separates himself seeks his own desire. He quarrels against all sound wisdom. In fact, those habits, they can often drive us further into unhealthy emotional prisons. Have things you enjoy, but don't let those things you enjoy become the sources of your rest, renewal, and strength. You can relax, you can enjoy, but if that is the place where you are finding your source, you will find it lacking. Number three, self-love is not self-exaltation. Exaltation, love, praise, honor of oneself, where we're doing things to draw attention to ourselves, And here's the reality, if self-exaltation is our process, then outward affirmation is our goal. And whether we recognize it or not, we have made a decision that the place from which I will find a way to love myself is through the love and appreciation that I receive from others. We need to be in healthy environments. We need to have people around us to lift us up. But we are manufacturing situations so that we can lift ourselves up and have people say what we want them to do. And that is not self-love. Jesus lets us know that we have it backwards. 
In Luke 18, 14, he says, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Genuine humility is a great marker of genuine self-love. So what does it actually mean to live in healthy self-love? Loving yourself. Loving yourself allows you to see yourself the way God sees you. In thoughts, words, and actions, you're able to relate yourself from a motivation of self-love. Self-love involves a healthy acceptance of yourself right where you are with no strings attached. And this is not a normative way we are treated or we treat life. Everything is based on what you've done for me lately. But Jesus lets us know that the love that God has for us is not dependent on action or deed, but is purely dependent on who God is love. Therefore, we we, we, got to take it. We got to receive it. We got to hold on to it and discover how receiving that unconditional love that never leaves you nor forsakes you, how that can transform your life. That is the source of self-love. Because you will make mistakes. Your life will have ups and downs. But thank you, Jesus, that the love which is offered to each of us is not contingent upon what we have done, but solely upon what Jesus has done for us. Stop filling your own cup from your own cup. Because that will lead to a cycle of of pain and lacking what self-love is actually going to be. We need a pattern of living that flows from a pure reflection of who God is and who God is to you. I've recognized in my own life that I've I've missed the mark in this. And self-love, it defines how you find acceptance in life, communicating that you are accepted right where you are. It keeps you rooted in a sense of belonging that is not based on merit or performance. Whether you're surrounded by a crowd of people affirming you or sitting quietly in solitude, self-love keeps you satisfied in the arms of God's acceptance. Self-love, it sets the tone for how you establish your worth in life. When when you love yourself properly, you gain a healthy sense of value based on the simplicity of being loved. You're, You're going from a cup that's overflowing. It grounds your worth in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ who gave of his life for you as a love gift. His death and resurrection, it gave you the opportunity to become Father God's treasured child. Therefore, it has nothing to do with with your roles or achievement, but in simply accepting the invitation to be God's kid. And performance cannot enhance the love a father has for his child, so growing in self-love is founded upon the ability of a child learning to receive love. And then self-love, it manifests best when you engage the pillars of love, patience and kindness. Love is patient, love is kind. And being immersed in self-love involves being patient and kind in all your thoughts and actions towards yourself. Are you patient and kind with yourself? With self-love, you're able to engage in the power of love whether or not people love you. Your self-esteem and identity are not hinged on every act of others. If they happen to extend love to you in an authentic way, it's a bonus to the love that you already possess from God. This does not imply that that self-love ignores relationship, but I would say that it enhances connection because it releases you from the relationship hang-ups that are based on our absence of self-love. Self-love, it cultivates healthy acceptance of our flaws and imperfections. It doesn't obsess over those areas that we often try to hide. And and loving ourselves affirms the invitation for us to be ourselves. Authenticity. Where you can be yourself, eliminate fear of exposure and condemnation. Healthy self-love allows you to live accepted, safe, and at peace in your own skin. And when you operate in that healthy space, You are affirming what God says about you. And then that becomes a byproduct of how you live. I truly believe that we are supposed to tap into a cup that overflows. Because self-love says, I choose to love what God loves. And he loves me, so therefore I love myself. Loving yourself has a lot to do with self-compassion. Of giving to yourself what you would often extend to someone who you love dearly. And and many people live kindly towards others, but they never give that level of kindness to themselves. They they can exercise patience with others, but they rarely 
live in that space with themselves. No wonder we eventually burn out. No wonder we feel empty and lost. We're pulling from a cup that we are trying to fill on our own as well. Frederick Buechner, he has this great quote. He says that the grace of God means something like, here's your life. You might never have been, but you are because the party wouldn't have been complete without you. Here's the world. Beautiful and terrible things will happen. Don't be afraid. I am with you. Nothing can ever separate us. It's for you I created the universe. I love you. There's only one catch, like any other gift. The gift of grace can be yours only if you reach out and take it. Maybe, making, maybe being able to reach out and take it is actually a gift too. We'll be living and giving from an empty tank far too often, but loving yourself satisfies the deep longings of your heart while establishing a powerful reservoir of compassion to pour out to others. We need to tap into a greater source. God's love for us is said to be excessive and, and foolish. Paul defines God's love for us as an excess. It infinitely exceeds and surpasses what reason can comprehend and the heart can desire. Um, relative to us, it's excessive, but not in, it's not excessive in itself. Paul also calls it without exaggeration foolishness because this love has in some way overturned the, the, the natural relationships that we see in the world around us. In Christ, he died in place of, of you and I who had made ourselves his enemy. Such a thing is just foolish in so many ways. But Christ, he died in our place. He died when we were enemies. And then he poured out his life, not out of a place of, of obligation, but out of a place of love. And we need to meditate upon this excess of love. True love is another being loving us in an unconditional way and we don't know true love till we meet true love in the person of Jesus. Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. God is wanting it to be flowing with the, the unconditional, genuine love of God. This is not just a passive love that's just flowing through. This is an active love. There's a war taking place on the inside of each one of us. Ask about every single relationship and then you're going to quickly find that tension and challenges exist. Why is something so amazing as love so difficult? Why do we spend most of our days jumping over relational hurdles and recovering from tainted experiences? Isn't there a much better way to live? Well, there is and it's to find our source, our strength, our renewal, our hope and our love in Jesus. Every movie, novel, play, production, whatever, it depicts struggles in relationship with God, with others, with ourselves, because that's the narrative of our daily life. Um, in the Eldridge's book, Love and War, they say, we live in a great love story set in the midst of a war. We are surrounded by an indivisible battlefield that wrestles over our ability to walk in the fullness of love. And our enemy knows if he can compromise our lens of love, then everything else is simply details. I, I, I love going into spiritual precepts, but I also love the practical day-to-day -day habits that we can add into our stories. So I wanna ask you as we, as we wrap up, can you ask yourself some honest questions? Where does my love come from? Am I kind to myself? Why do I show love to others and not myself? And then I want you to take time and begin to fight the lies of the enemy. One of the biggest struggles of self-love is that we place a lot of our hope in our insecurities and a lot of our faith in our insecurities and we believe those to be more true than the promises of God and we go to war with ourselves. We are emotional beings that are capable of thinking and feeling but the enemy can feed your thoughts even sometimes sounding like your own voice and you can have negative thoughts coursing through your being without even realizing but but i want you to ask god today for discernment and to know this that that when those voices and that thought runs in that is not the voice of god 
Be aware of the accusing, condemning, and guilt-ridden thoughts that come your way. They're designed to distract you from resting in God's love for you. They're not the voice of God. They're the voice of the enemy, the accuser, and they will cause you to have a myriad of thoughts that keep us conflicted and blocked from experiencing the power of God's love, of being in that self-loving place. They're not of God, guilt, accusation, or condemnation. They will never get us anywhere, nor will they help us grow, but they will certainly demand our attention. So ask yourself those questions. And then begin breaking the agreement with the mindsets that you have kept from loving yourself. It's important that we firmly break agreement with the mindset that block us from loving ourselves. And what I mean by this is that, do you have negative lines of thinking about yourself that you've come to accept and agree with? We all do it. And you, maybe you don't even realize it, but you've become that character archetype in every slapstick sitcom that hears something negative about themselves and just agrees and, and looks sad. Every moment of agreement is a decision against self-love. It's a diminishment of God's love. It's holding on to the belief that you actually don't have a love that is worthy to give. And in order to break that agreement, we're given this incredible invitation of repentance. Repentance is a God-given tool to break the chains that bind us. We are held captive by that which we are in agreement with. And repentance breaks that agreement. It gives us a, a new, new voice, a new story, and we repent of, of that destructive mindset, and we break agreements we have with its ways. Repentance in every practical sense means to move from one way of thinking and into another. God isn't in the business of making you feel bad. He's in the business of making you feel free and to be free. And the love that you are invited to receive is not simply meant to be a nice idea, but a foundation for our lives to actually experience that love to the fullest. For God so loved the world. From love, God gives freedom. From love, God wants you to flourish. From love, we are created, and the enemy wants you to believe that the relationship you have with yourself is either all that matters or doesn't matter at all. But in the kingdom of God, you are pursued with unending love to receive and experience the healing that you need so that the testimony of love might begin to then change the world around you. You wanna make a difference in the life of a neighbor? Make sure you're taking active steps to loving yourself. Ask yourself some of those questions. You wanna be used by God in the building of his kingdom here on earth? Begin to receive the unconditional love that you need to sustain your life. You want to see your family and friend relationships flourish. Make sure that you are secure in the love that you have received and showing that to yourself so that you can begin to give freely of that love to others. Watch your habits. Pay attention to your language. Open yourself up to forgiveness and let patience and kindness be always present in your process of self-love. Church, I believe this with my whole heart that if we are a people that have a revelation of how God's love is truly capturing our lives, then self-love becomes a natural response. Loving others becomes a natural response. And then we begin to discover what we talked about at the beginning of the year, that overcoming spirit. Maybe you need to ask some hard questions this morning. Maybe you need to ask yourself, where is the source from which you're drawing all your strength? And if you don't know who Jesus is, if you feel as if the idea of God loving you is beyond even your comprehension or even where you are in your story right now, know that your, your lack of understanding or your place of where you're at does not diminish the truth that God loves you. That on a cross... Jesus died so that you and I could experience the fullness of life in relationship with him, with God. That we could have that right here, right now. So wherever you're at, I would just invite you. Would you pray with me? And would you just invite God to come into your life and to begin to reveal to you 
that gift of unconditional love and place your trust in a cup that is always overflowing. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks that we are shaped by your love, that we are invited to receive your love, and that we are given so much strength when we discover it and hold on to it. We just repent right now for those thoughts that we have held on to, those, those lies that we have held on to and we've used to identify ourselves with. We just place our trust in your promises right now. For those that are listening that don't know you, I just pray that they have a revelation of what it means to be loved unconditionally. That you would show up in their home, that their, their home be full of your presence as they pray. That they would discover who Jesus is. And as we begin this journey, this, this month of, of what it means to, to love and to have relationships in our life, I pray that we would find our source in you and that we would begin this process of self-love. That we would hear your commandment to love God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind and to love our neighbor as ourselves. How much more can we come to know who you are than to know what love is. So let that be true in our story this, this week and beyond. We give you thanks. In your name we pray. Amen. stand before you or by majesty and covered by your mercy your blood has made me free draw me to you Set my heart on fire. I want to know you. You're my one desire. I give you my worship. All my passion give you my whole heart and all my devotion never ending your hands that carry me your body that was broken for all the world to see my heart is held So unconditional You captivate me You're the lover of my soul I give you my worship And all I think about Here I will bow down
For that sermon Jason um, it's been a great morning so far and uh, we have a few announcements before yep. we head you off into your week um, uh, first of all if you're needing or looking for prayer um, you can email your request at pray at city uh, very responsive team I'm fully aware of that because my wife <laughs> is involved obviously so uh, they take it very seriously and there'll be I'm fairly certain immediate correspondence so if you're looking for anything there uh, by all means email pray at city Awesome. Another thing that is important uh, to our church to be the, the head and shoulders Knees and toes. <laughs> of, the, of the body is, uh, is giving. Uh, if you want to support us, if you call City Collective Church home, um, yeah, make sure you are giving. Yep. And yeah, there is a website, uh, citycollective.com slash giving. That's the one. That is the one. And, uh, you know, we do our best to stay as closely knit a community as possible. Obviously, when things were, let's call it, uh, normal back in the day, uh, we spent a lot of time as groups and uh, in small groups and stuff like that. If you are missing that in any way or form after service, uh, I think there's a, a link that's uh, pinned in our comments. It's a Zoom link. Just go right in there. It's a room full of people that are very lovable <laughs> and very happy to see anyone new. Uh, to chat about the message and yep. other things like that and at the very least uh, be a part of a community here So yeah, uh, join in if you get the chance. Yeah, that's awesome um, Yeah, and just as a church body, let's just make sure that we're we're tuning in we're checking in with each other yeah, Every Sunday um, 1030. Yeah, every Sunday 1030. We're just gonna be taking this a step at a time as we kind of await uh, New orders from the government making sure that we're 
we're doing our best to keep everyone safe, but uh, also making sure that we're taking care of each other. That's it. Yeah. Um, it has been a great morning. It's been really good to see you, you know? It's nice. I, I do I, miss this. I, 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 <laughs> I yes. do miss this. Yes. I do miss this. And hopefully we, we're we all in service one day soon. Yes. And uh, playing our instruments, singing our songs, and Bro. listening to our work. You know, but That's a dream, baby. That's a dream. Let's send the church off for the week. Absolutely. Um, if you would feel comfortable, just put your hands out, and uh, I'm going to close us in a benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May we learn to love ourselves just as God sees and loves us. Love God. Love people. Be, be the, the church! church. <laughs>